the language eDFA, which is the machine descriptions of all the DFAs whose language is empty set, was proved as a decidable language in the last chapter on decidability. The summary of the proof is this. A DFA is a machine with finite number of states. You can think of DFA states as nodes in a graph. Starting with the first node, which is the start state of the DFA, you can check which nodes the DFA transitions to on each symbol from the alphabet. After a finite number of transitions, you will end up marking all the states that can be reached in the DFA from the start state. If the marked states do not contain any of the accept states of the DFA, we can confidently say that the language of the given DFA is empty set. Now let us look at the language ETM, which is the machine descriptions of all the Turing machines whose language is empty set. The fact that Turing machines can loop endlessly even though they have finite number of states makes it impossible to employ the technique we have used earlier for the DFAs. Turns out ETM is undecidable. But the theoretical computer scientist in you should not just take my words for granted. You should seek for a concrete proof. Uh, we can reduce ATM problem to ETM problem to prove ETM's undecidability. If we assume that ETM has a magical decider R, it can answer the question whether a Turing machine's language is empty set or not. Let's see if we can use the ETM decider R to build a decider for ATM. If the Turing machine M's language is empty set, R would accept it. If the language of machine M is empty set, there is no way that the Turing machine M would accept the string W. Quite obvious, right? That is why I will be connecting the accept state of ATM decider R to the reject state of ATM decider S. When ATM decider R rejects the machine description M, then M is capable of accepting some strings. We don't know what they are, uh, but let's find out using a universal Turing machine U. So we can simulate uh, the word W on M. Here is where we run into a big problem. The universal Turing machine may end up accepting, rejecting, or looping on the string W. Hence, the construction of a decider is not possible with this architecture. We have to creatively come up with a machine that eliminates the possibility of looping and cleverly uses the ETM decider R to construct the decider S for ATM. I need to remind you that theoretical computer scientists spend significant time and effort coming up with these proofs. Here is how you create a decider S using R. After receiving the machine and string pair as input, the machine S dynamically creates the Turing machine M1, which works this way. This Turing machine M1 can accept, reject, or loop on an input string X. Inside M1, we add a small subroutine that makes sure any string other than W is rejected immediately. We do that by creating this bypass connection from the if-else subroutine to the reject state of the Turing machine M1. If the input string is W, then we simulate the machine M on W using the universal Turing machine. Now the universal Turing machine can accept, reject, or loop on the word W. Uh, would you like to guess why we did all this? I will show you in a bit why. In the decider S, right after we get the machine description M 
and string w, the machine m1 is dynamically created. Due to the clever circuitry in m1, the only string that can be simulated on the universal Turing machine inside it is w. We can send the machine m1's description to the ETM decider R. If R accepts M1, it means the machine M1's language is empty set, which means the machine M, when simulated on string W in universal Turing machine, ended up in reject state. Hence, when ETM decider R accepts M1, machine M rejects W. So we can connect the accept state of R with the reject state of ATM decider S. Now let's say ATM decider R rejects the machine description M1. It means the language of M1 should be non-empty. This is where our clever circuitry of M1 again comes to our rescue. The only possible string that can reach the accept state of M1 is W. Any other input string to M1 bypasses the circuitry and directly ends up in reject state. Hence, if M1's language is non-empty, it has to be W, which is simulated on machine M ending up in the accept state. We can confidently say M accepts W when ETM decider R rejects M1. I will connect the reject state of R with the accept state of S. There you go. We just built a decider S for ATM problem using ETM decider R. As a decider for ATM cannot exist, the decider for ETM should not exist. ETM is undecidable. Reading the textbook proof is mandatory to really understand this proof. Rewatch this video again after reading the textbook proof.